Hey y'all, I'm Tracy and this is Just Dig It Farms. Today I've been planting the vegetable garden. I've gotten started on it. I just finished planting all my tomatoes. I did a whole video on how I plant my tomatoes and what I put in my hole and how we're growing them this year. So y'all go check that video out. I also am talking about companion planting with your tomatoes in that video. This is my tomatoes that I just finished planting. So this is my cattle panel trellises that I'm growing my tomatoes on. And here's my tomatoes that I'm gonna train up the cattle panel trellises. And there's more over there. So the companion planting with these tomatoes is, I've got nasturtiums in here. You see those? I've kind of got those planted in there. I've got some marigolds planted in here. Right there. They're little tiny babies, but they'll grow. These are ones that I grew in the garden shed, so. Um, this garlic is here from last fall when I planted it, so it'll be time to harvest this soon. Uh, I've got carrots in here that's coming up and I've got radishes in here that's coming up and all of these are great companion plants to grow with your tomatoes now my basil's not ready yet and I'm just gonna go buy some but I'm gonna pop in some basils like behind the cattle panel here you can see on that side I've got onions and garlic so that garlic will be coming out soon I've still got to come in and uh, get my garden journal and label all my tomatoes and pull these tags out and then put my hay, my covering over them. And the tomato section will be finished. But y'all go check out my video on planting tomatoes. I talk about it a lot more in depth and show you how I plant them and what all I put in the hole, the companion planting and why. So y'all go check that video out. So right now I'm getting ready to plant my squash and I wanted to share with you my companion planting that I'm going to be doing with my squash. So I have yellow crookneck squash. These are some that I grew in the garden shed and they're real leggy because I don't have enough sun out in there. So I hope they're going to be okay. And I've got nasturtiums. This is borage and radish. And those are going to be my companion plants with my squash. So on the squash, I've read that if you plant your squash earlier than what you normally would or later than what you normally would put your squash in the ground, that you can help avoid some of the pest, some of the insect problems. So I'm actually planting my squash a little earlier this year than I usually ever do. So we'll see how that works. So these are the nasturtiums, and nasturtiums are supposed to help repel squash bugs. So I definitely am gonna put those in my squash heels. And this is borage, which borage is an awesome little blue flower. It's beautiful, and it attracts a lot of pollinators. So um, I'm gonna plant that with my squash so that my squash blooms can get pollinated easily. So these are the radish seeds. I'm going to sow them in my squash heels, about two to three seeds per squash heel, and they're supposed to help with beetles. This is how I plant my squash. I make me a little heel like this, a little squash heel, and I scoop out the middle of it really good. Then I put me a little compost in my hole, and this is black cow. I ran out of mushroom compost. So I'll put that in there. And then I put me some biotone in there, which encourages, encourages the mycorrhiza fungi. And I explained that in a little bit more detail in that tomato video. Then I put my squash in there. And you could just direct sow this, the squash seed if you wanted to. You don't have to use plant starts. You can direct sow the squash seed. And then I just plant my squash, pack it in really good. 
Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put me a couple of radish seeds on here. Just a couple in my little heel, kind of surrounding it. Okay. Then I'm just gonna kind of dig me a little hole to the side of the heel and plant me a nasturtium in there. This is why I grew so many nasturtiums in the garden shed. Because they're great companion plants with plants with a lot of things. I've planted them with my tomatoes, I'm planting them with my squash, and I'm going to with my cucumbers because they help with uh, cucumber beetles. Okay, I think on the borage, I'm just gonna kind of plant them between, like the, here's a squash heel and here's a squash heel. I think I'm just gonna kind of plant them between here. The squash is just gonna run and fill up all this ground anyway, but the borage will kind of peep up through it, I think. I'm gonna see. I've planted borage with other things before, but I've never put it with my squash plant. But I really wanted to do that this year. All right. Borage grows really easy from seed. Okay, so that's my little companion planting with my squash. So I've got my squash and my squash heel. In my hole, I use some compost and some biotome. I put me some radish seeds, about three radish seeds per heel. I've got the nasturtium over here to the side and I'm putting my borage in the middle. And I'm gonna see how I like that this year. Last year, all I did with my squash is I just did my squash and radishes. So I'm adding two more things to my companion planting and see how I like it this year, see how well it works. I'll come back and just side dress this with a little garden tone fertilizer. Water it in really good, cover it with my mulch hay, and my squash will be done. A lot of times we've just direct sowed the uh, squash seed in these squash heels, and we'll put like two or three seeds per heel, you know, just to make sure they germinate and they come up. And um, sometimes I've thinned them out, and sometimes I just leave them and just let them go. But like I've got this one little tiny baby one, and I think I'm just going to put it in here with this one. Today is vegetable garden planting day. Yay! I jumped the gun and planted my tomatoes about two weeks ago and we just had about three or four days of a little cold snap come through so I've been covering those and protecting those. I knew better yet I did it anyway. I got tricked into believing that with all the warm temperatures we were having that, th that it was over and spring was here and I fell for the trickery. But anyway we're all good. I feel like it's passed now. I think that was our last little cold deal and I am ready to get some more things in the vegetable garden planted. So today I'm going to work on getting sweet potatoes in the ground and um, some beans and peas and possibly some peppers. I'm still early for peppers but I've got them and they're ready to be planted and I'm gonna go ahead and get them in the ground. And Jean's mom and dad is down this weekend and we've been working on the little garden area down in the lower part of the field where we're planting watermelon and corn. And we've just about got that all cleaned up and ready and we're about to start planting corn. He planted the watermelon yesterday, so we're gonna get the corn rows planted today. So um, this weekend is gonna be all about vegetable garden planting. Before we get started, let's just enjoy this beauty for a minute. This is my favorite rose, Quietness. Isn't she beautiful? I love this rose. That's my first bloom of the year. If y'all haven't seen it, go check out my video on quietness. It tells all about the history of how it got its name and uh, I tell you all about it. Y'all go watch that video. I think it's a walk in the cottage garden, quietness rose. And look at this. 
This is Vaccinium dorawa Rose's Blush. It's a little dwarf blueberry. And it just finished blooming. There's still a few little blooms on here. Can you see those? And then um, it sets little blueberries. And this thing will be loaded in blueberries. The birds love them. And this is beautiful. It holds its foliage all year long, all winter, and just is gorgeous. Look at this beautiful garden sage. This is just culinary garden sage, and I let it flower. Isn't it beautiful? Look at this sweet combination. This is Sweet William, it's a dianthus. And that is Spanish Lavender. And behind it is Baptisia. And I believe this one, it was Purple Smoke Baptisia. And that is Belinda's Dream with some yarrow. And echinacea and this is in the border in front of the tomatoes but isn't that just a beautiful combination I love those two together I'm loving that okay time to get busy let's get some vegetables in the ground I finished inspecting the bees and had to add some two supers and one deep and actually three supers I'm sorry and one deep uh, bees were very healthy they are in very good shape like I said and we expect to have a lot of honey very soon uh, I'm not sure when Tracy the boss wants to have them uh, harvested but for the first harvest it should be here before too long I am about to go down to my lower pasture where I planted all that crimson clover. Uh, my parents are supposed to be coming down this weekend. He brought the tiller the other day. We're gonna do it the old style way down in that lower pasture. The soil is amazing. Um, and we're gonna take advantage of the water the way it, it sits in this little valley. We're gonna plant a bunch of watermelons and we're gonna plant several rows of corn. Um, just kind of see what it'll do this year. Um, so it's separate from Tracy's garden. So I'm gonna see what happens and uh, I'll take you along on that journey too. <laughs> got it pretty good tilled up powder now we need to go down there and just go through with the rake and weed it out and then till it again but it's getting there can't wait to get in there with my father and get some vegetables cooking down there cooking planting them <laughs> getting them in the ground can't wait to see what it looks like Prepping the soil to grow some watermelons and corn. Dean tilled some of this up yesterday. We're gonna till up some more so we have more room for more rows of corn and watermelons. So he's tilling and Pop is going down there to start raking out the grass. And this comes off of this little hill kind of dips down and then it kind of goes back uphill just a little bit right there. So this should hold water pretty good when it does rain. Watermelons need a lot of water. They need a lot of water to develop good juicy sweet watermelons.
in my garden. Oh, that's Dad down there. <laughs> Planting watermelons. And Mother is sitting on the, the truck with a rocky bee. Jubilees. The next four is Crimson Sweet. Okay. And the next two is the little ice box type. Mickey's. They're All called right. uh, ice box Mickey's. Mick, Mickey. Mickey Lee. Okay. Hmm. All right. So, how many watermelon you think we're going to get out of all this? 100. He said they're gonna run all out in here. Yeah. Those jubilees will. I don't know how how much these, but they'll run. Got long runners on them. I don't want to run. Eight to ten feet. Well, I carried made, brought them special. Okay. And I fertilized it, the tops first, and worked it in with the rake, mm -hmm. and then I went and put the uh, seeds in. Sounds good. Get out. Get out. Watermelons in the ground. Farmer be... Gene and Gene and Tracy and Linda are going to sell you some corn. Yep. Corn and watermelons. And watermelons. we're going to get and we're going to give twenty percent to uh, missions. Okay. All right. Sounds good. We'll send it to Joel and Leah. Yeah. In Ecuador to the Hope House Ministry. <coughs> All right. Sounds good. Hey, we changed our plan. Yeah. Tracy said she's got four beds up there where we put the okra. So those other two rows, I'm going to go ahead and put them in the corn. Yeah, the more oh, corn, the better. Corn. What do you think, champ? <laughs> oh, yeah, Dad's champ. Going to shake hands? Why? Dad's going to shake. I'm going to go ahead and plant them. Save that. We gotta get our rows straight. Let's move it over about four inches this way. Okay. down in LaGrange, Georgia when Chance and Michael Seaton was going to college down there and playing football. And your mom and dad was down there, Bo and Barbara and Gene and Tracy and I in London. We were camping and we went to see this farmer and uh, Bo heard he had some tobacco or something for sale. 
and he was a farmer and uh, he I saw this okra growing on vines way up in the air and asked him about them and he said that uh, this this is real good okra that it, that's climbing okra and I'd never heard of it before. Mm -mm. I several pods of it and I took it home and never tried it so we're going to try it down here on some trellises. They're full of okra seed. And I, I believe they're still good. Anyway, anyway, he said they were delicious, so we're going to try them on the trellis. <laughs> trellis is it. Just dig it far. That's when Dad was all into wanting me and him to grow his tobacco for him. Yeah. And we yeah. we did we grew some tobacco for him. He smoked it. That. Yeah. We were trying to learn how to grow tobacco, and we went to see that farmer and learn what to do. I didn't even know you had those okra seeds. He, he met him at uh, he met him at a store, didn't he? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
sweet neighbor who lives across the road up on the hill is in her 90s and she has not left her home since all the coronavirus stuff started. So I've been just taking her eggs and um, African violet and just different things just to try to keep her cheered up and leaving them on her porch for her. And she is something else. She's in her 90s, but she is sharp as a tack. And she is in her garden weeding. And she likes to go places and do things. And and uh, she's something else. But she used to own all of this property. Um, her mother and father were farmers for this land, for our land their land, a, a lot of the land on this road they owned and they farmed it. And her father passed away when she was really young. So her mother just kept farming and she ran the whole farm, all of the workers, everything. And she has shared some incredible stories with me about her mother and um, growing up here on this land and showing me pictures of her mother and different ones in the creek right back here in our creek. Uh, playing in the water and her children grew up hunting on this property and playing on this property and, and I just love spending time with her and listening to all the stories and looking at her pictures about the history of of our property and this land and everything it's just it's so intriguing when this virus is over with I plan to go up and spend some time with her and video her um, just telling some of the stories about the history of this land because it's pretty interesting. But today, before I get back to planting vegetables, I went out and picked her a little bouquet of fresh flowers from the garden and washed some eggs and got them ready for her. And I'm going to take them up there to her and set them on her porch just to cheer her up. And then when I get back, I'll be right out there in my garden. Yesterday, we got our sweet potatoes planted and covered with hay, covered all the berms and the aisles with hay. And um, today, I have been putting in beans and peas. So right behind this row of sweet potatoes is our bean trellis that we made. And I just ran a little trench right down in front of this trellis, right behind the sweet potatoes. And I have just planted a row of Kentucky Wonder pole beans to climb up my trellis. And on these sweet potatoes, right behind them, you can kind of see my little places where I planted. Those are um, Blue Lake bush beans that I planted all behind that row of sweet potatoes. These are red potatoes. I ran out of room from over there. And right down at the end, you can see the difference. That's more of my sweet potatoes. And I planted more of the Blue Lake bush beans behind it. Okay. On this bed, those are all my white Yukon yellows and red potatoes. And right behind them, down the rows, you can see my little spots. I planted Roma bush beans. Not really sure what these are, but I had a packet of them and I'm gonna give them a try and see if we like them. I did the same thing here. Right down this row is the same thing. All the way, as far as I could, my uh, kale's down there. So whenever that comes out, I'll add more beans then and then I can have like some beans coming in a little bit later too. And on this one, I just did a few little things of cream peas. And when I harvest all of that kale and those cabbages down there, then I'll plant all of that in cream peas. That cold snap kind of got some of my potatoes, but I think that they're gonna be just fine. They just look bad. They were beautiful. So on these two trellises, I was gonna do climbing beans, but um, 
I put some of that ochre seed that Pop gave me that him and my dad got from that farmer in LaGrange, Georgia. And that was about 2014 when he got those seeds. So I'm not sure if they're going to work or not, but I sure hope they do because that is awesome. And it's a climbing okra. So that's pretty cool too. So I've put that on these trellises and hopefully prayerfully they will work. Now this bed over here, I haven't put anything on my footboard yet, but that trellis, I planted cucumelons or sour gherkin melons. They're little round uh, cucumbers. They look like little tiny watermelons, but they're little round cucumbers. I haven't ever had them before, but um, Jess at Roots and Refuge talks about them all the time, so I wanted to give it a try. And in this bed, I'm going to just fill it up with zinnias. Uh, this bed, right now I've got broccoli, um, Brussels sprouts, collards. Uh, those are sunflowers coming up down there that reseeded themselves from last year. And on this trellis, I've got some straight eight cucumbers that cold snap kind of, kind of bit them a little bit. So I may have to plant some more, but I'm gonna see if they'll come out of it. And I've got my nasturtiums planted with my cucumbers. In this bed, I had to use one of my rows for sweet potatoes because I ran out of room on the other bed. So I've got those in here and I've got purple hull peas planted down that first row, down this row up to my collards, down this row, and this row up to my broccoli. So whenever I take out my broccoli, brussels, and collards, then I'll complete my rows with the purple hull peas. We eat a lot of purple hull peas. This isn't gonna be near enough, but I don't have all my beds quite ready yet. So in all of these beds, in the little rounded edges here, probably this one, I'm gonna plant some marigolds. This one, I'm gonna fill that space up with zinnias. That one's going to be full of zinnias. And this one probably be a mix of marigolds and zinnias. Um, and just to balance things out, I'll probably have to put some zinnias over here. To, maybe the little dwarf zinnias. In my potato and bean beds, which is this one, that one, and that one down there. So in these beds, my companion planting is the beans, green beans on this one, and sweet potatoes. And I'm gonna come back and add some marigolds to this and some nasturtiums. But I, I've gotta grow some more nasturtiums. They, they grow pretty quick from seed, so I'm gonna pot up some more probably tomorrow and get those going. So I'm gonna add nasturtiums and marigolds to this bed. Green beans are supposed to deter potato beetles and it also is going to add some nitrogen to the soil. And in return, the potato plants deter the Mexican bean beetle. So that's why you would plant those two things together. And the marigolds, of course, deter a lot of different pests. And they're just a great companion plant. Nasturtiums planted around the potato hills are also supposed to deter potato beetles. I've used all of my nasturtiums and marigolds that I grew in my garden shed. I didn't grow near enough. So I'm going to just direct sow some of the marigold seed in, in these beds with the potatoes and beans. And I'm going to sow some more nasturtium seeds in the garden shed and try to get those to come up. So I'll be adding those things to these beds for companions with the potatoes and the beans. I've still got a lot more planting to do. I've got a lot of herbs I need to get in the ground. I've got some basils that I'm going to be adding to my tomatoes. And um, I've got more onions to add somewhere. I don't know where I'm going to put them yet, but somewhere. And I've still got to plant my peppers and my okra and my amaranth and my eggplant. And um, I've still got a lot more to plant. But I want to go ahead and get this video up for you guys because I know some of you are planting your vegetable gardens and this information about the companion planting may be helpful for you. 
So I'm thinking that there's going to have to be a vegetable garden planting video part two. I hope this video has been helpful for you guys in experimenting with some companion planting and I hope that it is very successful for you. I pray that you have an abundant harvest this year and that you have joy in your gardening and I will see you on the next video. God bless you guys. Have a beautiful day.